<coughs> Disclaimer. The information provided to you in this video course is for educational work only. It teaches you how to work with Linux and some security tools from the information technology. The author is not responsible for the way you use this information. The information provided to you has an educational objective to impart knowledge to everybody who is interested in Linux. Persons who want to use the shown knowledge to harm other people are unwanted and it is forbidden to them to watch this video course. At first I want to give you a short overview about this course. We start with the basics of Linux and then we will learn how to use files and directories. After we are able to handle the Linux basic commands it is time to go deeper into the system and network areas of Linux. Then you will learn how to use the shell and shell scripts. After that we will take a look at the toolkits of Backtrack 5 and also on the configuration files of the Linux system. Last of all we will take a look at demons and how they work. I hope you will enjoy this video course and learn something useful. After booting Linux you enter your username and your password. The username for Backtrack 5 is root and the password is Tor with double O. After the login you are on the shell and start the desktop with the command start x. It takes a little while until the desktop appears, so be patiently. 1, 2, 3, and there we are. Nearly every Linux command looks like this. But not every command has options or arguments. In the most cases, commands can stand alone without options or arguments. Let's see an example. You open the terminal window and type in ls on the prompt, next you hit enter. Do you see the output? Now type in ls followed by the option minus l. Next you type in ls minus option L, and the argument big D, followed by the star wildcard. This shows you everything that starts with big D. Now if you try this with the letters ABC you get an other message. If you don't know how to use a command, you should be able to use the help system of the Linux shell. There are basically four commands that you should know. The first is the help command. The second are the manual pages. The third and four are the apropos commands and the what is command. That's great stuff that you should use. Let's see an example. Open the terminal window. Type in ls minus help. See what happened. You get an error, the reason why this is happen is that you need to type in ls minus minus help, and then you get a help message how to use the ls command. There are many options, and arguments for the list command that you can use. Now let's clear the screen. Type in the command clear. Next type in man followed by ls, to see the manual pages of the list command. Here you have the whole documentation of the command. The manual pages are great stuff that helps you to find nearly every single option and argument for a command. You can quit them by typing colon and then the letter Q and after that hit enter. The next command is the apropos command. If you can't remember how the whole name of the command was, you type apropos followed by the name you think the command is called. Then you get some proposals. See the example pwd which means print name of current working directory. There is also the pwdx command which reports the current working directory of the process. Let's see what the pwd command does if you type it into the shell and hit enter. It gives you the current working directory 
Great. Let's clear the screen with clear. The what is command tells you the whole notation of the command. Type in what is, followed by the command name. Great. Here are some examples, what is ls, and what is pwd. Cool stuff, let's clear the screen with clear and use the exit command to close the terminal. Now you know some basic commands, but you still don't know how to navigate on the shell. Important under Linux is the fact that all commands are case sensitive. That means that writing a less small is another command than writing a less as uppercase characters. If you don't care about this fact you won't be able to use your Linux system. I tell you this just by the way, if you don't find it out by yourself until now. But now let's go, open the terminal window, type in the command pwd to see the current working directory. You are at slash root, the home directory of the root user. With the ls command you can list the files in the current directory. Let's type ls, and see the output. Then type cd space dot dot, to change the directory and go one step up, to the parent directory. Now you are in the root directory. The root directory is the main directory of your Linux system. In this directory and its subdirectories, Linux places all the files that you are working with. Let's explain a little bit what every directory stands for. You see the bin directory. In the bin directory are some executable files and programs which are accessible to every user on your Linux system. Here you find for example the ls or pwd commands that you see till now. Just type in ls bin, and hit enter. Do you see the output? Crazy. Now clear the screen with clear, and type in the list command again, type ls. The bin directory is similar to the bin directory, but it contains programs, that are important for the Linux system. Therefore stands the letter S in front of bin, in the spin directory. The home directory is one directory for the users of the Linux system, and their files and documents. All registered users of the system, store their data in the home directory, but you will learn more about this later. Directories for device and system configuration files are, boot, etc, lib, sys, div and var. In the boot directory are all files needed to boot the Linux system. In the etc directory are files e.g. for network configuration, for demons, and much more. The lib directory contains all libraries of the system, you need them if you want to compile an application, later in the course you will learn more about that. In the sys and div directories are configuration files needed for devices, and the system. The var directory stores all protocols of the Linux system. The protocols are important if you need to see what your system has done in the past, it is the history of your system. Things like errors, are logged in the protocol directory var. The directories media and MNT are used for mounting devices like DVDs, floppies, USB storages or hard disks. In the directories opt, proc, share, and USR is the whole software your system works with placed. Programs like OpenOffice, GIMP, Firefox and so on are placed here. The SRV directory is there, if you use a web server like Apache. The Silinux directory, is a directory for a security system under Linux. The directory Pentis is Backtrack 5 specific. The temp directory and lost and found are system directories. Ok, that was now a long, and crazy explanation what all directories stand for. I hope I don't forget anything. Now back to our navigation topic. Start a terminal window, type in ls to list all items. Then type cd space dot dot, to go up to the parent directory. Then type ls again to see, what items are in the parent directory. 
you are in the root directory. Type in cd space usr, and hit enter, then type ls to list up the items. Type cd space local, and hit enter, then type ls to list up the items, now type in cd space bin, and hit enter, one more time type ls but this time with the option minus l and the argument m, with star wildcard, and hit enter. You see now the map command, this is one of the most powerful port scanners that exist. I will show you later in the course how to use this tool, but now let's get back to our navigation topic. Clear the screen with the clear command. Type now cd space dot dot, and see what happened. Yes. You are one directory up at slash usr slash local. Now type in cd space dot dot slash dot dot, and you are back in the root directory. Cool stuff. To find more about the usage of the cd command use the manual pages, or the help command, I mentioned that earlier in this course. And now, let's go back to our home directory. For that you just type in cd, and hit enter, that's it. Now you should be able to navigate on the shell. Chapter 1 of this video course is now over. I hope you learned the basics. If you don't understand something, then you have the possibility to watch it over and over again. Use the help system of your Linux to get more information about a command. I taught you the basics and hope to see you soon on part 2 of the course. The topics in part 2 are files and directories, how to work and manage them. Thanks for watching. Love the beat, control you.